All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone. If you're in the um, in the U.S. and Canada, and and good afternoon. If I know I've got some some folks here from Europe on board. My name is Deborah Peters, and this webinar is all about moving you forward during this incredible time that we're in. And I'm sure that everyone is feeling some kind of restriction, constriction, slow down, and has, have a lot of questions about what to do with their business as we begin to start to function again throughout the world. And thank you so much to my panelist, Rigo Martinez from Insperity. Great to be able to partner up with you and to do this. You know, Rigo and I've had a lot of conversations about how important it is right now to put positive and useful and strategic information into the hands of all the SMEs on the planet and to, uh, to, to kind of give you a lifeline, you know, something to connect to besides all of the negativity that's going on and, and the dire reports that are happening in the mainstream media as well as in social media. So thanks, right. Rigo. Absolutely. Thank you. Looking yeah, forward to Yeah, my it. pleasure. All right, let me get up a screen share here and we're going to dig in. So just kind of from a logistic perspective, this is what you can expect. We'll, we'll go through till about, um, about 45 minutes and um, you can, any questions you have, put them in the chat box and we'll address those. If I can address those during, I will. If they look like there's something I'm, I know I'm going to cover based on the tools I'm presenting today, then what I'll, I'll do is I'll wait till the end. And Rico's got some really good pivotal news that you know, where he's taken a lot of the new um, initiatives, I guess we'll call them, <laughs> that are yeah, coming yeah, out yeah, sure. of the governing bodies around running your company. And, and he's, he's dug through the thousands of pages of material to be able to give you a high level view of things that you absolutely have to know at this time and going into the future. Right. So um, very good. Here we go. And like Deborah said, don't mind us. It's uh, what time is it? 10 a.m. over here, so we're still drinking our coffee. I know. That's what I was saying earlier. Your coffee, I'm tea. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, hmm. I guess this isn't going to work today. All right. Well, abandon ship, and I can always post the recording. All right. So, this is all about mindset and business strategy and... For those of you that know me, because I know I have some clients on here too, you know that I'm always addressing where you've got your head at when we're building out your business strategy. And I thought what might be useful for those of you that don't know me, especially people that are clients of Rigo's and people that are collaborators with Insperity, that this would be a good way to introduce you to what I feel and, and I've always had a vision for what the future is around business growth really does, it, it really, we're in a shift right now. And so when you can get in, in charge of your mind, when you can be willing, first of all, to shift your perceptions and then take yourself through a high level questioning process rather than clinging to old points of view, then you're actually able to make the changes, you're able to pivot, you're able to make the changes in your business model that are necessary, you're able to map out new strategy that will take you to where you want to go in terms of your goals and your objectives. So it's very much a holistic approach that I'm sharing with you today. Now, I, I want to say this, and that is, I was sharing this with Rigo earlier. What I've, what I have for you today is, is basically like a three or six hour workshop that I'm, I've deduced it down into being able to give you this holistic awareness. 
but I can't go into detail because it's just too much. You can appreciate that. And normally I have templates and worksheets that you can utilize that I give you, you know, I just, they're free. I just give them to you because I feel like it's really what you need to be able to get up to speed. Um, but today I can't do that. So we were actually having this conversation as we were setting up the webinar, running the test this morning, that maybe what we should do is have a series for you so I can start to dig into some of these resources and give them to you, but we won't be able to do that today. So if that interests you, keep your eye out because we'll be sending out invitations for future webinars and we'll continue to build on this material. So essentially what I did, having said that, is I broke it down into nine keys so that you can respond and move forward in any economic downturn. And, you know, honestly, I've been thinking about this for the last while. You know, we can, we can prepare to the best of our ability for something as catastrophic as this. But I, I don't think anyone can really say, you know, we're prepared for the entire world coming to a screeching halt and we, we've got this. You know, I, I don't think there's anyone that can really say that because who would have ever imagined? You know, I was doing webinars in September, October, November, and December, and I was saying 2020, 2020 vision. It's not just a new year, it's a new decade. Who knew that here we'd be at this point in, you know, as we're like just barely into Q2, the second quarter of the year. So um, I think that it's really useful to, you know, with these tools, you'll have an arsenal of tools going forward because should this start to impact us again, I've, you know, I've heard that there's going to be cycles of this. So you'll be best prepared and you'll be in a resourceful place to be able to create new outcomes for you and for your business. So now is the time I've been, I've been telling my clients, if there's ever a time in, in your running of your company that you can really cultivate a deep and meaningful relationship with yourself and really embark on, I mean, I would suggest that everybody just get into hyper personal growth mode, learn everything you can about negotiation skills, about mindset, about growth mindset, about strategic design and, and whiteboarding and mapping out your strategy and looking at the attitudes and the belief systems, re, re look at your values because your values are what drive behavior. You know, this is the time. It's like, as much as it's really painful to, to have the economic struggle or the monetary downslide, you have time. You have time because it's not just you that isn't functioning. It's all of us in every market, in, in, on every continent, in every country, in every city, in every economy across the world. So work this time, be wise. And I'm going to give you some tools on how to do that. I want to tell you a little bit about me. For those of you that don't know me, like who is this person <laughs> and where'd she come from and why should I listen to her? So it's a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a, in a rural area and um, you know, my dad died when I was seven. So my mom stepped up and she took over the family farm. We were bankrupt and the, my dad was a, a, a POW and we were financed through a veteran loan initiative that was ready to foreclose on the property. So my mom suddenly found herself, you know, at 35 with three girls, this single mother in this rural area, and she became a farmer. 
And 15 years later, she sold that farm, uh, a multimillionaire and, you know, God bless her because she just like literally bootstrapped. So that's the stock that I come from. And I, I grew something within me from a very, very young age. And that was really how to find, you know, how to make lemonade out of lemons and to really step through the fire, if you will, and be resourceful in my thinking. So that took me to Vancouver. These are some pictures of, of such an extraordinary city. And I worked in the radio industry for a few years and it was in Vancouver that I launched my coaching business and my speaking business. And I've been all over the world with the work that I do. My background is in neuroscience and, and business strategy. And I marry the two together to give business owners the keys to move past their choke points and to shift their focus and pivot toward the future. So I'm going to bring that to you today. It's been 17 countries over 20 years, four continents. And, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I, I just want to I just want to create credibility here. You know, I've negotiated a trade agreement between two countries. I've done training for the Federal Bureau of Investigations. I've, I've done a lot of interesting stuff. So it started out owning a gym and I worked with professional hockey players that, you know, when you're NHL level, like any professional sport, all things being equal, it comes down to how you run your mind, how you focus your energy, your ability to know your gifts and your ability to push through. So that led me into a whole host of possibilities. I've worked with professional race car drivers. Rumbum was a client when they were part of the Grand Am division of NASCAR. Um, I've, you know, my company, we've created partnerships with post-secondary education platforms, colleges, universities in Rome, in Spain, in Canada, where I've, I've gone in and I've taught their local business owners how to scale their companies. And so we've created these partnerships and certificate programs, and I'm basically bringing you the highlights today of some of those tools that I've taught and teach globally. These are some of the partnerships that we've had over the years. So the UK Trade and Investment Group, um, NASDAQ, you know, I figured go big or go home, might as well take it global. And uh, it's a passion of mine, if you can't see that already. This is, uh, I, li I live my work. You know, it's not something I have to do. It's something that I get to do. I get to get up every day and do what I'm doing right now. And nothing could be a bigger blessing for me. So I'm bringing you all of that too. Here's a couple more partnerships. So this is uh, Alberta Innovates is a government organization out of Canada that funds SMEs and startups and We've done some work with OWIT, which is Women in International Trade based in Lake Geneva. They're a, um, a global women's organization. Done programs for Arco Oil, Kia Motors, uh, all sorts of mortgage companies, and the list goes on and on. KPMG and continues. Let me tell you a little bit about Rigo. So Rigo's a veteran, right Rigo? Yeah. Yes, so I am. So you want to tell yes, us a I little am. bit about, you know, being a veteran, I mean, thank you for your service to all of us and the freedom that provides. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So basically, uh, thanks, Deborah. So yeah, absolutely. So um, veteran, yeah, I was in the Coast Guard for um, a little over four years. Um, so uh, it was during just being in there um, that I learned, obviously, you know, just the importance of always having a system in place um, because you never, you never know what's going to happen. You know, always expect the unexpected. And um, one of the things that I learned at a young age was you being in the military was always having 
a game plan, always having a plan, because if you don't have a plan, well, then you're probably bound, bound to fail. So I kind of got just using that concept. I've kind of brought that over into my business, uh, into my business world. And it's kind of helped me uh, personally um, be successful. But at the same time, when I'm talking to uh, prospects or clients, just kind of inputting that information and that mindset. And uh, so with that said, um, over the course of my career, I was in Texas for a little while from, from California, born and raised here in California, but living in Texas there for a little bit and um, got into the benefits world, um, uh, you know, HR stuff about five years ago. And then uh, just kind of worked my way up. And then now I'm working with Asperity um, and Asperity is an awesome company. And um, you guys provide HR statement. services, yeah, and employee benefits and stuff. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, that's exactly what we are, you know, HR and business solutions, as it shows there on the screen. And basically, in a nutshell, what I like to do, even more to so our mission statement now, is um, helping businesses thrive and grow uh, so communities prosper. And yes. that mission statement has never been more, more true than now. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so basically, in a nutshell, it's kind of what I do. And um, talking with Deborah over the last few months, um, the more I picked her brain and had lunch with her, I realized that she's definitely in the same thread that I am and wanted to help out um, all the SMEs uh, that she comes across. So yeah, that's kind of what I, what I do. Absolutely. And you know, on that point, one of the things that I've noticed over the years is, and this is not a criticism, this is just kind of, um, you know, let's, let's just be honest. Most most companies don't have a plan that they can execute on. They have an idea and, you know, they might get together and run numbers. This is what I see really, it's a really common thing. They'll get together and they'll run numbers, they'll look at last year's numbers and kind of see if they can forecast next year's numbers. But that's really not a plan. You know, that's um, a re, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be just really blunt it's like that's a regurgitating of the numbers and I call it the fly by the seat of your pants business model. You know, really it's critical that you map out every aspect of your business and, you know, key partners, key resources, key activities, who's doing what with whom and, and who are they reporting to and, you know, get really truly understanding all of your customer segments. But, We'll get into that in the next in the next webinar. So, I did put the link to Rigo's uh, LinkedIn profile. Definitely connect with him there. He's a great resource to have, and um, and then you know we can continue to to grow and and build this thing. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So here's what I'm covering today. So I'm going to go through the five stages of loss with you. I think this is a really important element to understand so you can get a handle on how you're feeling. Um, you know, I know that I've had my moments. I've had my moments of, of being angry and I've had my moments of being feeling defeated and I've had my moments of feeling sad. So I'm going to give you some tools to just navigate all of that and get you up above those lower vibrational emotions and energies. I'm going to share with you the six characteristics of people. We, we really want to dial down your team right now and make sure it's high performing team members in, in every way possible. The growth mindset you need to move forward because we are moving forward, even though it doesn't feel like it right now. And then the, the willingness to pivot, the willingness to pivot. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, and then I can go into that in more detail in the next, in the next webinar. Um, steps to reboot your company, what you need to look at, what you need to let go of, what works for you, to, you know, by taking inventory of your assets and prioritizing change. It's really important that you get this into a hierarchy that you, that you again, you can get your arms around, that you can handle. You know, one thing I know about human nature with my background in neuroscience is 
there's a left and right brain and, and the left side is all about logical, linear, digital kind of thinking. And the right side is all about the emotive, the sensing, the intuiting, the feelings. And if they're not working together, then it's like three steps forward, two steps back. And that can have an impact on your health. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the next webinar as well. And then of course, you know, taking action. So the execution of the idea, I mean, an idea is worthless if you don't have a strategy to execute on that idea and turn it into physical form. Um, and then the three choices that you have right now at this time and place in history and then we'll dig in and enrico has got some tools to share so let's first off let's look at key number one so the five stages of loss first of all you know it's denial number one is like and i remember this so well i've coached companies the same people at in different levels of growth and and um, expansion over the last 20 some years. So I've, I've coached some of the same companies through 9-11 and the impact that that had economically on all of us across the world. And then 2008, the impact that that had. I was in the south of France at a luxury event when all the news about what had happened with uh, the stock market and Lehman Brothers and all that started filtering into Europe and I just watched it all come to a screeching halt. So here we are again, you know, it's interesting to me how as we're going through these growth changes, how I'll get emails and calls from former clients going, look, you took us through the hard part before, can we, what can we do with this? So the first thing is to accept, you know, it's like, you gotta get past the denial. This isn't happening. I remember in 2008, the conversation was, oh, you know, three, four months, everything will be back to normal. You know, in a year, everything's gonna be fine. In a couple of years, we're gonna be in good shape. 2012, when we were still struggling. So getting past this whole denial thing, I think is, you know, and you probably know about this really well, Rigo, when you're doing um, Coast Guard work, it's like, yeah, this is happening. This is happening right now and I need to be on my game. The second Absolutely. is, right? The second is anger, you know? So when we're angry, we're usually angry because we feel out of control. So we're really craving certainty and safety when this is going on. And anger is always the, um, the buffer for fear. So when you feel angry, it's usually the cover up for fear. Like you're really fearful, but you don't know how to express that. So you're angry. So, you know, this, actually assists you in deflecting that core intense emotion of fear. And I think there's no weakness in admitting that you're afraid. You know, there's a book, old school book, like 30 year old book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I highly recommend you get that book because we're, there's a large amount of fear happening right now. And if you can you know, if you can walk through that fire, you can feel that fear and you can keep asking for greater possibilities and ask higher level questions. And I'll cover that in the next webinar. I'll teach you how to ask questions that actually open your mind up to resourcefulness. Okay. So that's where anger can be very useful. I would rather see someone angry than depressed because when you're depressed you don't you don't execute but when you're angry you push it through stuff so when it comes to looking at emotions there's no wrong emotion and being vulnerable and saying yeah okay right now i'm really angry or right now i feel like this fear and it's so intense and i can't sleep at night i mean just admitting that you know it takes off it just takes it off of you. It just, it releases it basically. So the other thing is that anger inspires away from activities. 
So we're going to do this to get away from that. And that's usually an emotion based step. So we're afraid. So we're going to take action towards something to get away from the fear of X, Y, Z. That is useful when it's short lived. You don't want to stay in that space long term because you'll end up, you, you just end up not making good decisions. What we want to do is we want to transpose that into a toward driver because that becomes very powerful. You're moving toward a tangible, measurable outcome that's quantifiable. And there's so much more power in that than moving away from a negative emotion, right? It centers you, it grounds you, it focuses you. You need to be willing to change. This is the time when I really want you to look at your entire life and be willing to change habits, thoughts, beliefs, relationships, the food you eat, the way you relate to your body, the way you're willing to embrace relationships with others. Just be willing to change. And you know, even just saying, I'm willing to change, there's the change right there. There's the change right there. And it can be at a gradient that you can handle. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. That might have been a better slide, right? Bargaining. Okay, so bargaining is the next stage of loss. If we only had not spent the money, hired the staff, expanded our operations, been so optimistic, made those poor judgment calls, or just been refusing to, to grow. I mean, that's a dialogue. That's an inner dialogue. That might be a dialogue you're having around the, the virtual boardroom table right now. And so at that point, people start to get a little bit desperate because they just want to get some kind of control back. So they're like, okay, God or higher power, whatever your belief system is, you know, I, I promise to never mess up again, or I promise to be nicer or kinder or whatever. This is the kind of space that I feel like is kind of one of those pivot points, you know, where it gets us to, to look at things differently. Like there's a level of surrender, but there's also guilt, you know, guilt can be a byproduct. And in the bargaining stage, you know, we're really thinking survival mode and we're using contraction and constriction and it undermines your intuition and it blocks your resourceful thinking. So we don't want you to stay there too long. Now these five different phases of um, dealing with loss can come in any order. They're not linear and you might feel more than one at a time. So it's really important to bump up your desire. I'm going to start, as we go through here, I'm going to start asking you to focus on creating rather than, you know, hunkering down and constricting and focusing on what's, what's wrong or what's not working. It's time to start looking toward how you can pivot, what you can pivot and what your assets are and how you can utilize that awareness to, to grow the company in, in a different direction maybe, or to, to rebuild a certain revenue stream that you let go dormant. You know, there's a lot of possibilities here for you. All right, so then I talked a little bit about depression. You know, there's two kinds where we react, you know, and we have emotions of sadness and regret. And then there's the next kind, which is really about letting go of the past. And isn't this a wonderful time, which I hear a lot, to stop saying, well, this is the way we've always done it. Therefore, this is the way we'll always do it. You are being asked right now to rethink your entire business model. What's the market going to need from you going forward? We'll talk about that a little bit. When I was in the beginning saying, you know, this is really a great time to get into hyper mode on personal growth. And, and no, I don't, I don't mean that literally. Like you can't, you can't push yourself into 
consciousness. It's a journey. And we all know that. But nonetheless, like dedicate some time to it every day. Meditate in the morning. Um, get, a, get a journal and start writing out your goals and rewriting them and mind mapping them and, and just really start to tune into your strengths. Make a list of your strengths. Make a list of all the great accomplishments you've created. Get into that focus of being positive and looking at what works. And then of course, the fifth step is acceptance. So this is the space between previous stages and peace, you know, the serenity, right? You're not quite happy yet, but you're not feeling defeat. And it's kind of like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I see this as the pivot point. This is truly, truly a mindset right here. This is where you shift that mindset and start to look at a growth mindset of possibilities. You know, what haven't we thought of yet, right? All right. So I'm curious if this is making a difference for you guys. And I'd love to see some uh, comments from you, any questions that you might have, anything you'd like to contribute about what you've been thinking or experiencing. And um, yeah, I just would, I would love to know. I mean, Rigo, what, what comes up for you as we've gone through this sort of this mindset segment here? Yeah. Um... I think actually the very last slide that you just uh, touched on the uh, serenity, I think the key word there is serenity, right? So you're, yeah. it's almost like you see the light at the end of the tunnel now, right? And I think that's where I think everybody is at um, here in the US and I'm sure abroad, everyone's kind of probably feeling it now where yeah. everyone's kind of accepting our new normal, right? So like you said, maybe we're not, truly happy just yet but uh, i mean we do see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah and uh, one of the things that i know um my team uh well we've been kind of been talking about the last week probably more of the last week than any other time is how 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 you react now right to this crisis um you 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 can capitalize on it you can't capitalize. So whatever we're doing right now, for example, this webinar, how we're talking through a mindset, um, maybe you, uh, whatever you do for a living, whatever you're doing right now, um, it will it will come back. And we'll be reaping the rewards yeah. in a few months because this is not going to last forever, obviously. It can't right. last forever. I mean, right. it'll probably I take agree. a while to get out of it. But I think finding that peace within yourself and knowing what it is and then moving forward and knowing that you're making plans right now, preparation. So when this thing kind of finally dies down, you come out stronger. So if you're not doing something right now, um, whether Start it is, now. Yeah, if you're not Start learning now. about your business, if you're not learning about somebody else's business, if you're not learning something about yourself, then you're kind of wasting a lot of time, so. Absolutely. You know, you can start over any minute. In fact, you can, you can be in the middle of a bad day and you can start over. You don't have to wait till the next day. You don't have to wait till the next week. So you don't have to wait for this to be over to start over. You can start over now. And if so you, true. if you, right. And if, if you look, if you look at anything you've ever done in your life, anything, the house you're living in now, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the family you have or don't have, whatever the case is, whatever your circumstances are, whatever is going on for you right now, that started somewhere. You know, when you were talking, Rico, in the beginning about how you've worked your way up and everything that you've learned and you've accumulated, you see it's cumulative. So life is a continuum, business is a continuum. There's, there's, and it can be painful because we're attached to it working out. And I, can, I don't have time to get into it today, but I'll talk about this in the, in the next webinar. There's basically three energies that you need to have in your business right now. And one's a mover, one's a connector, and one's a creator. And I'm going to go into that in the next webinar that we do, because it's not about, 
it's not about people, it's about the energy. You know, right now we're in this space where you have to understand that everything we do creates energy. And so what are you doing with that energy? So when you make decisions that today you're just gonna learn one new thing and maybe it's gonna be about, like to your point, another business or maybe it's going to be about the market changes over history and how humanity bounced back and became stronger. Find something every day to learn, right? It just will make a huge difference in your mindset. So mindset is really a compilation of beliefs, values, and attitudes. And a belief is just a thought you think over and over. So holding on to old beliefs at this time is not going to serve you. Being flexible in your thinking, being willing to have new points of view and new perspectives are probably going to be the number one key to getting to that place of acceptance because then you can start to move forward. So key number two, reimagining you and your team. So here's the six characteristics of people. So we've got the passive folks that are waiting, they're doing nothing, they wanna see what happens. And I have a lot of people that say that to me, not just during this time, but in general. Just in general, it seems to be a common phrase, like a go-to phrase. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, what if you were to prepare now for that future that you're creating? In a nimble kind of dynamic way that as everything starts to unfold, you can navigate that and you can maneuver that. There's the spectator that's watching the news, social media, they're waiting to be told that everything's going to be okay and that now here's the green light, you can move forward. They're receiving information, but they're really not doing anything new. And this is, this is a choke point. Contraction. Now there's two kinds of contraction. There's a contraction that you do when you pull back and hunker down and hoard. And we saw that, you know, when all the toilet paper shenanigans were going on. And then there's the kind of contraction where you pull back to re-strategize. And, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of law enforcement and served on boards with the LAPD. And I've learned this really well is, you know, it's not defeat, it's, it's pulling back to re-strategize and then you move forward. And any really good negotiator knows this. When you're going in to negotiate a deal, you know that sometimes you have to pull back and re-strategize and then start moving forward. The victim is complaining, lamenting, and forecasting defeat. The cheerleader is insisting that all is well, but they don't have a plan and deep down they're really expecting to be saved like everything's going to be okay and it's all going to come and then there's the leader the leader implements the basics so get on the phone start calling people you know you should be having you know i don't even know how many quality phone conversations can you have in a day like 5 10 20 just get on the phone and talk to those people connect to those people get on linkedin Connect with people on LinkedIn, send them messages, book a phone call, start to look at joint ventures and collaboration. So starting over, like I said earlier, it's a fact of life and new, and new beginnings should be expected. Where you're really gonna feel like you've been sucker punched in the gut here is if you don't know this. If you don't know that starting over and new beginnings are to be expected, then you're gonna get caught off guard. So what we want you to do is we want you to lean in. It's not about fighting back, it's about moving forward. It's about, again, having that growth mindset. So fall in love with your business. You know, whatever it is that you're doing right now, maybe it's not what you want to be doing. Maybe you want a different life. Maybe you're running the company and you're exhausted. Maybe you have been ha weighted with making heavy decisions about who to keep, who to let go, where to cut corners. Just wherever you're at, 
fall in love with whatever it is you're doing because it's in that space of connecting to what you're doing now that more opportunities come. And look, I say this all the time. When you're in business, where are you spending the bulk of your living hours? The bulk of your life is dedicated to that business. So if you don't love it, now's the time to really rethink it because you're spending all of your time there. And I really encourage you to get honest with yourself and maybe shift your attitude about what you're doing from, I have to do this to appreciation. I get to do this. All right, key number three, growth mindset. So get honest, um, discipline, you know, get yourself on a schedule, wake up early. Personally, I get up at 5.30 in the morning. I've been getting up at 5.30 in the morning, re, you know, relentlessly, regardless what's going on in the external world. My routine doesn't change. So get up in the morning, meditate, write your goals, read something positive, state intentions, speak affirmations, write down who you need to connect with that day and write down what you appreciate. What are you grateful for? Get into that space, exercise, you know, and limit your news intake. My, my um, suggestion to you is don't turn your phone or your computer on or talk to anybody till you do that first step. Because when you get into connection and alignment with you, then when you go out into the world, you can handle whatever's coming at you. But if you get on up in the morning and the first thing you do is you tune in to the external world, basically the tail is wagging the dog. So that external influence is now running your mind instead of you and these goals and your affirmations and your intentions running your mind. So get healthy, get physically healthy, get mentally healthy, pare down your overhead, you know, look at your staff, Look at your unnecessary overhead. Look at your extras. And really important is define the use of your time. Are you debating things with people that don't need to be debated? You know, pull your energy back from some of this stuff. Are you weighing in on social media in ways that aren't uplifting you? So you know, really look at your relationships at this time. Look at, look at who is really truly your team and, you know, up level your conversation. So start asking questions instead of the banter back and forth of this is my point of view and I want to argue you for this space of owning the point of view. List your assets from your people to your tangible it's time to get real. Like who really on your team is the contributors and what are they contributing and how is that taking you into the future? Review all your liabilities. It's time to get real. Look at what your liabilities are. Maybe some of your liabilities are Netflix. Maybe some of your liabilities are relationships uh, with people that you like to, you know, as my grandmother would say, like chew the fat and argue with. So, you know, forgive me if this infringes on, on your personal, feels like it infringes on your personal choice, but if there's ever a time in history, if you're a smoker to quit smoking, it's now. I mean, we have a respiratory pandemic. So, you know, clean that part of your life up. Dial back your alcohol intake. It's a depressant and it actually puts you into a negative state of mind. Find other ways to feel better, like exercise, get some endorphins going. I personally had a buddy drop off a set of dumbbells to me. And I went online and I signed up for an exercise program that I can pop up onto my laptop and I, you know, every day I'm doing my workout. So 
that will change things for you in spades. I feel like we should all come out of this lean, fit, healthy, and uh, with a really strong mind. Then review your expenses. And, and again, I said relationships. I know I've said relationships a lot in here, but you have no idea what I see. I did 10 years of couples coaching. So I've seen people be in relationships that just were like, I don't know why you're doing this to yourself. So really take a good look at your values and what's important to you about your future. This is your one kick at the can here. Are these the people you want to spend surrounding you? Are they contributors? And then inventory all your contracts. People are going to cancel. People are going to ask to get out of contracts. People are going to want to stop the money bleed. And if you're where their money's going and they can figure out a way to not send it to you, they're going to. So you need to get a hold of them before they come to you. Kind of head it off, if you will, before you get the email or before you get the call. And just be really transparent, really upfront and say, look, you know, I know you're in this contract and it's lasting for a while. So I want to be able to continue to serve you. Let's maybe cut some time off of it, but keep the contract. Change the payment arrangement, but keep the contract. Get into alignment, you know, work with your head and your heart together. And I'm going to kind of speed this up because I want to give Rigo some chance. And I, I promise you, I'll cover more of this in the next webinar. Key number four, learn to identify your blind spots. You know, most people aren't, we don't know what we don't know. And that's a human nature. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You just, you're being a human. You don't know what you don't know. But the biggest common blind spot is believing other people have blind spots, but you don't. So that comes back to that personal growth work. And you can go to YouTube and you can get tons of personal growth work. I've got a channel. I've got like 200 videos of free coaching on there that I'll send you guys later. So you can dig into that and use that as a resource. Pivot, make a list of who and what you will give up and make decisions. It's really important to make decisions. You know, it's better to make a bad decision than no decision. A no decision is like, it's a suspension, like nothing's moving. But at least if you made a bad decision, you can recalibrate. There's movement, right? Prioritize health, people you can afford, those you cannot. And surrender, you know? It really is truly surrendering, like the old plan no longer fits. And so what thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, relationships, ideals, habits, points of view, perspectives, do you need to give up in order to make space for the growth that you're creating going forward? Let go of resistance. You don't have to struggle or suffer to be successful. And I believe as we come out of this, this is going to be the number one thing that most people give up is that you're really going to discover what you're made of and you're going to realize that you're more powerful than you think. And you're going to start creating and building and growing. And you're going to let go of this notion of how much you skip lunch or that you don't spend time with your kids or your family, or you don't go on vacation because you're the grinder and there's, there's some kind of diploma for that. And it's like, no, you get your mindset right and your business will grow. Key number five, steps to reboot your company. So envision the future, spend time every day envisioning the future and do it in bite side chunks. I would say at this point, envisioning to the end of the year would probably be really refreshing. I mean, that's like three quarters. You can handle that. You can get your mind around that and then remap your business model. And we can talk about this in the next webinar, remap your business model, 
define your key partners. There's probably new ones now. Um, redefine your key activities, acting, thinking, functioning like a leader, add new key partners and give up the ideas and the choke points. Maybe the pricing has to change. Maybe it's about giving up some of your non-core products. So you can just really laser focus in on your revenue streams that are productive. I always notice when I go into a company that there are dormant revenue streams or revenue streams they haven't thought of yet that actually can become very lucrative. So it is about strategy and it is about execution. So here's some action steps. Again, get into hyper growth mode, like really work on yourself, reinvent your health, have full acceptance for a new reality that's birthing, defend nothing and praise always. You know, that's my mantra, defend nothing and praise always. Clear the decks, get a real clean slate, make calls, talk to people, get your calendar set up so people can self book on your calendar. So you can start building new relationships and fostering new possibilities. List your product offers and get really clear on where you can take those with your new key partners. So, you know, how resilient are you? It's like, are you willing to open your mind to the possibilities of what you haven't thought of yet and to take things to the next level? So you can do nothing. You can do it all yourself or you can get help. And right now, Having a mastermind, I think, is really useful. So I'm going to pause here. Really appreciate you guys being on today. And Rigo, why don't you go ahead and share some of that knowledge? We'll probably, we'll probably maybe go over five minutes by the looks of it. But um, definitely, I'd love to hear from you and to know what questions you have. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That was great. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I can definitely see how this is a uh, very high level and how we can definitely go even deeper into any one of these uh, PowerPoints, you know, I mean, it's good, good I stuff, uh, good stuff. So yeah, 45 minutes, an hour, obviously not enough time, but I like this. So maybe we definitely continue a series and go deeper into it. Um, but, uh, you know, I remember that you were talking and, and whatnot, there was a statement that was made to me um, when I was in the Coast Guard and it was from a, from a, a captain of a, of a shrimper boat and he's, and I'll never forget it. He says, sir, he goes, please don't take my boat. It's my livelihood, he told us. And I remember and for, it's been such a long time, but those words have always stuck in my mind. And basically, uh, long story short, uh, he was a captain of a shrimper boat and as a captain, he was cutting costs, right, to, mm -hmm. to, to stay afloat and he had a crew. While in trying to cut costs, some of his uh, federally mandated life-saving uh, apparatuses, uh, he didn't have them on the boat. Something as, as easy as a life jacket or a beacon that was expired. And he had probably four to about three to four million dollars worth of, 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 of uh, shrimp on his boat. And they were about to take it back to port to sell it. And unfortunately, we had to impound his entire boat, his livelihood. Very sad. I'll never forget that. And he was pleading with us because he needed it. Obviously, he had the family to support, right? But I remember that. And when I think about now, if you are always in that mode of just trying to, to, to save and, and cut a corner here and try to do it the easy way, and all of a sudden, when a crisis happens, you're left with nothing, right? So always, if you don't have a contingency plan, if you're not doing it the right way, and if you're not making plans uh, to, to plan for the unknown, like what we're, what's happening now, like you said, 2020 was supposed to be everybody's year, everybody's decade. I know it was mine, you know? Um, well, then- well, I think I even said that to you. Rigo, it's not just a new year, it's a new decade. A new decade. I mean, that was what I was saying. Hey, it's a new decade, you know, everyone gets, everyone's a, it's a free uh, uh, restart. Right. Um, but anyway, so yes, yeah, so I just remember that. And so not having a contingency plan, you're, you're, you're bound to fail. You know, you always have to make plans. So anyway, so with that said, um, 
let me, I'm going to take maybe two minutes to really go yeah. through this so that way we can just kind of just wrap this up. Um, I'm going to share my screen really quick just so you can see when I, I have a piece of paper, but I think it'd be better if you can, you can see this. So can you, uh, Do you need see. me to give you yeah. the, the controls yeah. here? Okay, hold on. And I'll go take me like maybe two minutes and then we'll wrap up and then uh, go on with our day. So while we're doing that, um, uh, for those of you that, go. okay, cool. So while we're, while we're doing that, um, the CARES Act really quick, um, what Deborah was saying earlier, this new laws and regulations that have come across here and here in the US, I don't know how it, around the world, how um, different governments are approaching this, but here in the US, they threw out a, a big economic lifeline to all this mean, a small to medium sized businesses. Um, and with that said, one of it is, like I said, it's a CARES Act. And basically all it is is a payroll protection pro program, um, which offers uh, non-recourse loans, basically help pay your payroll, mortgage, utilities, things like that. Um, employee retention tax credits. Um, this probably, if you're going through a shutdown, um, or maybe half of your revenue has disappeared. This is something you could tap into. Um, so a lot of it, the devils are in the details. And um, so something that definitely just, when you get a chance, if you want more information, you can just you know message me on the side, shoot me an email, we can go a little bit deeper on that. Um, but one of the things that California also has that, I don't know if any of the states are doing it along with what the federal government has, did, has done. Um, California has its own uh, disaster relief uh, program for the for COVID-19 and again if you want information on that just reach out to me and we can um we can talk so can about you that. click on the screen share again because uh can I see your screen yep here all right you see there that we go brilliant okay so basically um I'm going to pivot really quick away from that. And then this is kind of just going to just really piggyback on a lot of what Deborah was going over. Um, some of the stuff is obviously what we've already been hearing day in and day out, you know, COVID-19, all this other stuff. So I'm just going to skip through this because we already know how it is. But one of the things that um, you're, you should be doing is uh, looking hard into how you currently do your business, right? So, so a lot of the time you're, you already have policies in place. So now this is a good time to pivot and figure out that you might need to change some of the way, you're, some of the some of the the process that you're currently doing. You might have to change that, for example. So I just highlighted some quick stuff that I thought you might might uh, glean from. Um, again, temporary. If you have to temporarily um, make some changes to your policy, then do that. You know, for the sake of your business and your people. Um, I suppose because if if they're not encouraging people to go to the doctor and to call in, then getting a a note probably isn't going to happen. Right, right. Because you know, you know, the thing is, is again, you have to adapt. You know, you do. Yes. You got you got to take care of your people, whether they're telling the truth or not. You always have to assume, give them the best, give them the That's benefit right. of the doubt. Right. It's That's better right. safe than sorry. Right. So that kind of where this comes into play. Um, this right here goes a long way. If you can mm -hmm. show that to your people, your, your network, your family, that right here will pay dividends for sure. And you'll always get, uh, the, the most discretionary effort out of everybody that's, uh, that you're surrounded with. I have um, a saying, um, kindness never goes out of style. Never, never. Always Killing in with style. kindness, right? Killing with kindness. Yeah. They say. So yeah. I'm, Briefly going through this, I um, wanted to jump here to bullet point two, how to continue business during uh, a crisis um, or a pandemic. Again, no business leader wants to shut their business down if they don't have to, obviously, right? But again, going back to my little quick story, if you don't have a contingency plan, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be shut down. It is, it is what it is, right? Um, so with that said, uh, one of the ways to do it, um, Deborah hit it. Communication, right? Communication. Have a great communication process. If you don't already have, if you don't already have an internal crisis communication plan, again, this is a good time to create one. Either personally, at home, at work, wherever you're at, whether you're whether you have direct reports or maybe you report to somebody, you could, you still should have one. Um, why it's important 